Hello and welcome to Blow the Whistle, bringing you all the latest sport around the North West and with a jam-packed show for you today. Yes, yes, looking forward to today's show. Get involved with today's topics discussed at blowthewhistle.us on Instagram. Coming up, we have all the news and stories going into the final Formula One race of the season. England's victory in the T20 Cricket Series last week and, uh, and boxing news, as well as Salford City's FA Cup replay and all of the university sport. And of course, the big topic this week, Cristiano Ronaldo's exclusive interview about his future at Manchester United. Well, it's all kicking off with Man United and footballing go, as they call him, Cristiano Ronaldo. Here's Arthur Berry with the latest. So as a lot of us know, the main topic trending on everyone's Twitter feed and social media right now is Piers Morgan's uncensored interview with Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, the first episode was aired last night on Talk TV and it was definitely uncensored, with Cristiano Ronaldo mentioning how surprised he was in a bad way at how the club was run on his return, saying pretty much everything about the club was the same despite not being there for the previous 13 years, from the facilities to the training ground to even the chefs at the club and that Man United are behind previous clubs that Ronaldo's played for, like Real Madrid and Juventus, because of this lack of change in the decisions that the club have made. For example, appointing Ralph Ragnick as manager back in November last year, who Ronaldo described as not even a coach. Now, the interview also covered the death of Ronaldo's newborn son back in April, and how much that affected him and his family. And despite the obvious pain that that caused him, he says that the tragedy actually brought him and his family even closer, and gave hints as to why this may have influenced his decision to miss Man United's pre-season tour in the summer just gone. Now, the first half of the interview also features Ronaldo making comments in response to previous players like Gary Neville and Wayne Rooney criticising him. And Piers Morgan actually described Wayne Rooney as one of Ronaldo's biggest critics for comments that he's made about Ronaldo's attitude and the club's decision to re-sign him in 2021. In which Ronaldo responded saying that Rooney's comments are probably jealousy. As Rooney's career finished in his 30s, whereas Ronaldo still playing at what he says the highest level. Now, interestingly, according to Sky Sports News, Rooney has said in response to Ronaldo's comments that he's going to make no public statement on the issue whatsoever. However, he feels Ronaldo needs to accept he's in the latter stages of his career and being a player at the club at the size of Man United means respecting the situation and not expecting to play every game. And Ro However, despite this, Rooney feels no animosity towards Ronaldo at all, despite the comments that he's made. Now, this sequence of events is a stark contrast from the scenes that we saw on Sunday, just a few hours before that Piers Morgan announced on Twitter that the interview was going to be aired, with substitute 18-year-old Alejandro Garnacho coming off the bench and scoring to win the game for United in the 93rd minute to take United just three points off Tottenham in fourth with the game in hand before the Winter World Cup. However, now we are expected to go into even more detail tonight at 8pm, as I said previously, in the second half of the interview. And Piers Morgan has told viewers to expect fireworks for an explosive second half where Ronaldo will discuss the Glazers, Man United's treatment of him after the death of his son and Eric Ten Hag's management. Back to you in the studio. Evie. I think we should get a, an exclusive interview with Messi on the sofa, see if that goes well. <laughs> uh, boxing time then, our correspondent Jay Brain has the latest from the AO Arena. Just last weekend, the AO Arena behind okay, me guys, played host to the retirement yeah. bout of one of the city's greatest ever boxers. Ricky Hatton, a former two-weight world champion, faced off with Mexican Hall of Fame boxer Marco Antonio Barrera. Announced as an exhibition, the bout served as the hitman's final goodbye to a loyal Mancunian crowd that followed their local hero for the highs and lows of one of the sport's most turbulent careers. Over eight unscored rounds that at times more closely resembled good natured sparring than a competitive fight, the 44 year old rolled back the years as he pushed Barrera back to the ropes and unleashed his trademark body shots. In stark contrast, Hatton's former foe, Floyd Mayweather, embarked on an exhibition bout of a different nature on Sunday evening. Mayweather, the boxing writer's fighter of the decade during the 2010s, has spent most of the 20s plying his trade in exhibition bouts. Pitted against Deji Olatunji, a British YouTuber, fans and critics alike were worried about the billing, as the Londoner entered the ring with a record of just one win and three losses against fellow social media stars. The match itself was a comical mismatch of boxing ability, and despite the exhibition not intending to have an official winner, Floyd Mayweather mercilessly finished his opponent in the sixth round. The door now remains wide open for a rematch between Floyd Mayweather and Ricky Hatton. <coughs> Fifteen years on from the pair's Las Vegas super fight, the eyes of the sport remain glued to the two veterans. And reporting live in Manchester, I'm Joe Brain, back to you in the studio. 
Last week, Natalie gave us the latest on F1, and now she's here in the studio to discuss a huge weekend. Great to have you with us, Natalie. Good to see you guys. So, last Sunday at the Brazilian Grand Prix, Max Verstappen was handing a five-second penalty for his collision with Lewis Hamilton. This has created some controversy. Yeah, so obviously during the race, after the restart, um, we had a collision between Max and Lewis going into turn two. Now that has started some controversy between fans because Verstappen was handed a five second penalty. A lot of people find that very unfair because they think that the crash was more of a racing incident or it was more Hamilton's fault because some people argue that he didn't leave Max enough room going into the corner because Max was ahead. But then other people are arguing that obviously Verstappen doesn't have that right because going into turn one, Hamilton was ahead. So it is starting some sort of argument about the rules because they're not as clear as they should be for the fans and we're all confused and we mm. want to know what the answer is because it is a bit unfair, really. Lots of drama, Natalie. Yeah. Of course, big star George Russell got his first win as well. Yeah. How big is that for his uh, career? It's huge for George. Obviously, he's been in F1 for quite a few years now with Williams and then he made the move to Mercedes, which was huge for him. And this year, he's had an amazing start with various podiums. This weekend, obviously, he started last weekend, sorry, he started the weekend off on not the greatest note. In Q3, in the qualifying session, he did crash out. But then in the sprint race on the Saturday, he managed to work his way up and win the sprint race. So then he could win the Grand Prix on Sunday. So yeah, it was a great weekend for him. And I think he has a great future ahead of him at Mercedes. Well, this weekend is the final race of the season. What can we expect? I think we can expect Mercedes to be near the front of the grid, obviously, since they had the new floor put in at Suzuka, we've seen them flying up the grid. They're more competitive. They are at the top with Red Bull and less so Ferrari because they haven't developed their car a lot. So they can't really get to the top of the grid and fight for a win. They're fighting for podiums, whereas Mercedes look like they could be in for another one too. Yeah, Natalie, thank you very much. And local sport to us then here at Media City with Salford City losing 3-0 last night at the Pentula Stadium in an FA Cup replay. Here's our good friend Leo with the latest. I'm here at the Peninsula Stadium to see Salford City's third round FA Cup replay against Peter Butter. Here with a packed out crowd, hopefully it's a good game. I'm by Daniel, a Salford City fan. Dan, what are your thoughts for the game? FA Cup games are always exciting, they're always direct exciting games. I've seen Jack Jenkins on the lineup, so that's an interesting one. A Leeds lad, obviously plays for Leeds on loan at Salford, so it's good to see how his development will be going. I'm looking forward to it being an FA Cup game. Jack Jenkins, he's played well this season, looking yeah. to keep that good one of form going. 100%, you know what I mean? Like I say, we want him to go back to Leeds in good form, so let's see, let's all at it today, all at it. Yeah. And will Leeds be watching this game under a close eye and this, hopefully, FA Cup run as well? I do hope so, we need some more midfielders. Yeah. Right, cheers mate, nice one. What does play so far, Harrison, give us your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, Peter Brode is showing the better CI, do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, in an Irish league, but what do you expect? It's FA Cup in it, but let's see what the second half can bring. All his magic at FA Cup in it. So. Silver City 1 0 down, looking to ignite their FA Cup hopes in the second half. And that's full time with a disappointing 3 0 defeat to Peter Butter. And Salford City's FA Cup hopes are at an end. And as the rain falls on a cold night, Salford City fans will have to drown the sorrows out with a nice pint. Hopefully they'll have better luck this weekend well up against Carlisle at the Peninsula. Yes, University Sport Time now then. Sam Armitage has been exploring more about how Salford Uni are getting on. It was a busy Wednesday for the University of Salford sports teams. I am currently stood outside of the sports hall here on campus where the University of Salford basketball team won yet again last night against Lancaster. A routine wisdom performance was enough to grind out a 68-64 victory which means that the Salford team improved to a 4-0 record. They're currently undefeated and sit atop of the league. Elsewhere in football and the men's first team lost at home 3-1 against UFCB yesterday. However, their third team won a massive six-goal thriller 4-2 away at Kiel. This avenged their opening day defeat at home against Kiel, which at this point remains the only time they've lost in the league this season. 
in netball and the second team continue to remain undefeated in the league. Last night, they defeated Chester. And finally, in rugby union, despite two consecutive losses against Leeds, the Salford side sits second in the league after a massive 49-10 win against Bangor yesterday. Five. That's all for University of Sports this week. Back to you in the studio. Great to see England winning some tournaments in sports for once. This weekend, England won the T20 World Cup after a well-deserved victory over Australia. Here's Lou Johnson with more. On Sunday morning, the MCG hosted the World Cup T20 final between England and Pakistan. Joss Butler won the toss for England and put Pakistan into bat. Pakistan scored 137 for 8, with Sham Massoud top scoring with 38 before he was out. In England's reply, it was Test captain Ben Stokes who lit the show up, scoring 52 not out, as England only lost 5 wickets in their reply and reached 138 with an over to spare. That means England are now the current holders of the World Cup T20 and also the World Cup that they won in 2019 on home soil. Sam Curran was named player of the match for his three wickets for 12 runs. He was also named player of the tournament. England now face Australia in a one day international series before they play Pakistan again, but this time in the Red Bull format of test. Yes, and now the World Cup is nearly underway in Qatar and England's chances are looking like they could go all the way. Evie, looking forward to the World Cup? I am, it'll be interesting, the two countries I've never played and also there's a lot of criticism right now about Harry Maguire expecting to start in defence, mm. what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean it's an interesting one, he's not never been short of criticism Harry Maguire, he's always faced some kind of criticism whether at club level or national level. I think England fans have to realise that it's been a while since they've played in a, in a major yeah. tournament, they got to the final of the Euros which was incredible, they'll obviously be hoping to recreate some kind of success in the World Cup, it's a more difficult competition than the Euros, it's in a country that's never been played before Evie, but, but hopefully with a bit of you know luck on our side and the England fans behind them then you know we could bring it home or at least get to the latter stages of the competition. Well I think with Southgate's three Lions um, they've been so, like superb in the yeah. last two major competitions so I do think they're going to try and recreate that. Yeah no I agree but it's going to be interesting to see how it is in Qatar isn't it because it's yeah. a new country you know it's a completely new country. There's all that buzz surrounding it being in the winter and everything like that being a lot of controversy. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'll miss the barbecues in the summer I've had in the World Cup. Yeah. I will, definitely. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed though. Fingers crossed for England's chances. You never know. Hopefully, we'll keep you throughout the day uh, through with the news throughout the show as well over the next few weeks. And that's all we have for time for today. Make sure to share your thoughts with us on social media at blowthewhistle.us. Thanks for watching. Bye bye from me. Goodbye.